All right, all right. We are live, guys, and welcome to the thirteenth episode of Amy with DNK. Like always, I'll give you a few minutes to join in, and meanwhile, let me check and test if you're live on other platforms as well. So I'm super excited for this session today, and trust me. because this one is going to be super fun today we are going to talk about hardcore money paise ke bare mein baat karenge it's going to be super fun we're going to talk about what should you prepare and how should you prepare in order to raise money and specifically from the investors mindset investors point of view we're going to talk primarily from the investors point of view not from the startup point of view my friends so this one is going to be a super solid session So yeah, just stay tuned till the end, and I'm going to reveal also the perfect startup equation. And all those who are already here have joined. Drop a like and drop uh, maybe a comment. Type excited into the chat, and we will get started in couple of uh, seconds. Like as always, right? Meanwhile, let me check if we are live on other platforms. uh and yes i think i have i have lot of good stuff to share with you with you guys today lot of good stuff coming today uh trust me it's going to be super 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 fun this time hey deepak welcome to live uh and also i will let me type in the chat i will give you take a screenshot and invite your friends go guys uh as i said i will give you a few seconds so that you can quickly take a screenshot maybe invite your friends i don't want to kind of rush rush with today's session i want to wait for a few minutes and i just want more and more people to come and join and then and then we will start because uh this one is going to be really really critical it's going to be really important and that's why i want to take good sweet time to begin and then we'll jump into the discussion Okay. Chaliye, let's start today's session on AMA with DNK. Thanks, Deepak. All right, let's get started, guys. So, welcome to the thirteenth episode of AMA with DNK, and today we're going to talk about understanding the investor's mindset. And uh, if you attend today's session, basically, you're going to understand in depth about what investors are primarily looking for when they go and fund you as a business. Uh, what are they looking in terms of a business if they have to put in the money? So today we are going to change the hats. We are not going to talk from the startup point of view. We are going to talk from the investors' point of view. See, the logic of today's session is very simple and uh, very easy. We need to understand what's going inside the investor's mind, and if we're able to understand and uh, modify our narrative, modify our entire pitch, modify the entire, uh, modify the way we present our startup, there'll be a higher chance of we raising money as a startup from the investor than getting rejection, right? So this is what I'm going to help you decode. Now the problem here is that most of the people, most of the entrepreneurs, especially who are in idea stage or early stage, or typically who fancy this world of startups they neither understand money they need they neither understand investments and then they neither understand the entire process of invest in, investing right so the problem is that they only fancy and they think like ke paisa le lo and startup bana lo but they don't understand this entire thing in depth ke investment hota kya hai and that is what what we going to talk today right so uh, let's quickly uh, uh, jump into this discussion and uh, uh yep let's 
get started and of course meanwhile if you, if you have questions keep on dropping your questions in the chat and if you're excited for today's session drop excited or drop a boom in comments right so uh, uh welcome to the 13th episode uh good evening my name is dil nawaz and for all those who don't know me i'm the founder of codesign labs and power deck uh codesign labs is a design ops company where we work with startups and help them with uh enterprise basically we help help startups and enterprises and we help them with design branding content and tech solutions and at power deck we work with startups and help them with creating investor ready pitch decks so my full time job is that i work with startups help them with cre- help them with creating pitch decks and also help them with strategic fundraising advisory right and therefore uh my interaction has always been either with these startups on one side and of course on the other side i am talking to investors day in day out and this is what gives me a critical uh, a niche in terms of understanding what investors want and what startups want right so this is what we're going to talk about today Uh, uh for a quick in- intro to all those people who don't know me i'm an entrepreneur with a decade long experience across design technology and startup incubation space and if you want to learn more about me i would request you to go and check out my linkedin profile for all those who are here for the first time go and check out my linkedin profile and also would request if you can uh, maybe later check out my instagram handle it's running in the ticker below right so uh, what's aim of dnk Uh, first of all thank you so much for joining on the 13th episode for all those who are coming here for here for the first time or witnessing this for the first time amv dnk it's a weekly saturday night live live series that i host on my youtube channel it's exclusive on my youtube channel and this is where i come and talk about startups and the topics related to it and of course most importantly i come and answer a lot of your questions so if you have questions uh, already about investment pitching funding anything around startups as i said it's the 13th episode post them into the chat i will be answering them and of course but we will first be talking in depth about the topic of the day which is understanding the startup investors mindset uh yeah so on as i said on aim aim dnk i cover the topics and subjects that enable you to become a better entrepreneur and if you are a student or an aspiring entrepreneur or somebody who's building uh, a company in the growth stage this is the show for you so as i said right in the beginning if you are here if you already tuned in uh, i would request you because i'm i'm not rushing with the the session today I, and I, and and i'm still in the intro phase take a screenshot invite more friends and spread the word uh, i will begin in next 2 to 3 minutes but i don't want anybody to miss uh, and for all those think th- think where i'm watching i'm parallelly uh, watching the presentation and in the other parallel live which is running so uh, my request is invite more people because today's topic is going to be an eye opener for all those who are uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and especially in early stage and who want to raise money and yeah feel free to use chat drop a boom uh, drop excited drop any and everything you want use uh, the chat keep the chat chat warmed up and all those who are here for the first time once again and haven't subscribed i would request go and press the red button press the subscribe button below and like the video and then we will we'll move ahead uh, quickly telling you uh what we're going to do, do today in a nutshell we're going to basically talk about understanding the startup investors mindset and there are primarily five core topics five core issues we'll be talking about today number 1 what is investment and investment fundamentals you as an entrepreneur even even you would have heard about investment from the personal life point of view view but you as an entrepreneur also needs to understand what is investment because you, because some at some point in time you are going to go and raise money for your own business and even uh, investment is a part of personal finance but we'll not be talking about the personal finance uh, in detail we'll primarily be talking about this investment from the business point of you so uh, we will be talking about what is investment what are the investment fundamentals we'll also be talking about uh, the startup investment in depth so personal finance personal investment business investment are are all different kind of things and if you want to uh, if you want to successfully raise money uh, you need to need to need to understand what is startup investment right because then you need to as i said shape up your entire company entire business in that form so we'll be talking in depth in depth about understanding startup in investment right then we'll also be talking about who's a startup investor before understanding the mindset of a startup investor we will be talking about who's investor you need to understand and figure out and maybe create a persona sometimes that whether that person is an ideal investor for you or not and who's who's typically a startup investor then we will and we'll be looking at what investors want 
once you have identified that particular person we'll be then talking about what is that investor is looking for what is that he wants and then last but not least and this is i will reveal only in, in the end so stay till the end i will be talking about the perfect startup equation and by that i mean that i'll be if i have to kind of summarize everything in one line i will tell you the perfect equation perfect thing that you need to remember even before you go and pitch the first investor that will help you to make us make a company make a business look like a investable business folks remember not every business not every startup not every company is investment worthy there is a certain design there is a certain way a company needs to look if it has to raise money so i will be uh, deconstructing that equation for all of you and that is the last thing i'll be speaking about so stay till the end and in and let's let's kind of understand all these pointers right once again if you uh, uh, haven't liked the video yet if you haven't subscribed to the channel go and drop a like go and drop subscribe go and uh, go and press the uh, press the subscribe button and if you're already here drop a boom drop excited into comments let the let the chat be chat be warmed up uh and of course uh it's going to be an eye opener as i said uh you know uh, it's going to be it's going to be super fun today uh and i'm sure it's going to be an eye opener for all of you who are attending for the first time so yeah let's get started guys let's get started folks and let's understand the startup investors mindset great okay so let's first understand the so the topic number one i'm going to pick today and i want to talk on this is understanding the three basic investment fundamentals before even we talk about any sort of investment or any sort of startup investment or any we we before we get into any sort of a jargony stuff maybe like a vc or an angel or this or that or equity and stuff like that let us first understand the three basic fundamentals of investment and this is for everybody even if you're not an entrepreneur if you are a normal person uh, somebody who's in a job or somebody who's a stu who's a student this is something you need to need to need to know because without understanding the basic investment fundamentals you will not be able to kind of even even you will have trouble in even in a personal life so let us first understand the three core basic fundamentals of investment so point number 1 what is an investment i'm sure a lot of you a few of you have heard about this term before but what is an investment right so basically an investment uh is an asset or the item you acquire with the goal of generating income or appreciation you basically it's 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 a it's a, it's it's a product it's a thing it's an asset it's something that you acquire that you buy with the sole goal with the goal of generating income or appreciation and primarily future income or future appreciation so you the the, the point is that what what do i mean by appreciation appreciation refers to increase in value over time right and why do you need that you need that to create future income so you as a person and i'm sure a lot of you guys who live with your family or maybe are working professional you would have heard this advice from people that investment kar lete hain investment karna chahiye why because for a very simple reason that you need to buy certain things that give you future returns so investment is basically a way to park your money so that the money generates some sort of future income right so appreciation basically refers to the future value or the increased value of asset over time right so when an individual purchases a good as investment when you buy something which is an investment the intent is to not consume it immediately but rather to create future value or future wealth if you have not understood this i will repeat right but this is the base number one fundamental irrespective of the fact if i'm talking about startups irrespective of the fact i'm talking about uh personal finance irrespective of fact anything this is the core basic definition of investment that all of you watching this need to understand basically investment is anything you buy some sort of stuff some sort of product some sort of an asset with the with the with the intent or the goal of generating future income or with the intent that it appreciates its its value appreciates or increases over over the time so that it gives you uh, uh it gives you future wealth right that is investment right now so basically what is that product or what is that that you need to buy so that it gives you future returns or uh, it 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 the value of 
appreciates over time right so it can be anything it can be bonds it can be stocks it can be real estate it can be gold it can be commodity and especially in indian scenario if you look it can be mutual funds it can be fd ppf stuff like that so whenever somebody buys gold when in, especially in india right whenever somebody buys a commodity whenever whenever somebody buys mutual fund or does an fd or buy a real estate or buy a bond or a stock or equity maybe something what happens in the share market their idea is basically to park some sort of an existing money into something that will give them the future return that is the reason that is the intent behind investment if you understood this part type got it into the chat if you haven't understood this this part uh leave me a question mark into the chat and i'll explain it once again if you if you if you and if you got it type got it if you understood if you if you didn't get it type a question mark right now so when does an investment happen hota kaise hai how does the entire equation for investment work for anybody and why do we need to understand this we need to understand this for a very simple reason that uh when you are are going to approach even an angel investor and for high risk early stage companies primarily angel investors i'm going to talk at length about this in future in the in today's session right so angel investors are primarily hnis these are the wealthy rich individuals who who pump extra money into the company but they will be only they will only be able to pump money into the company once they have extra money and they the certain parameters which kind of perfectly match so the point i'm trying to make is you need to understand the point about around investment and also need to understand when investment happens so investment happens when an individual is left with some extra money after removing the money which is needed for his needs and wants that means that maybe you want to you have so so let me give you an example you let us say you earn 100 rupees right out of that 100 rupees you spend 20 rupees in your rent petrol and food right and oh, okay let me make it 50 you spend 50 rupees in your rent petrol food and basic other living expenses right remaining 20 20 rupees out of that 100 and i'm and i'm, and I'm, and I'm giving the example from 100 remaining 20 or remaining 30 you spend on your wants maybe buying a expensive phone maybe buying a travel maybe buying an experience maybe shopping going out and stuff like that right the remaining 20 rupees out of that 100 out of 100 you spend 50 rupees on your needs that is food clothing shelter security rent petrol things like that you removed or you you spend another 20 rupees on your wants that is travel buying a expensive pc buying expensive phone vacation stuff like that the remaining 20 or 30 is the money that goes for savings basically as in the form of investment so that it gives you certain sort of security for the future right so why do you need to do that you need to do that in order for primarily three reason one to combat inflation what do i mean, mean by that what do we what do we mean by combating inflation see infl and and i know this session is going to be little technical and it's going to be but it's going to be super fun and and for a lot of you guys watching this it will going to be an eye opener because most of you are going to watch this even later on as students you do not understand the concept of investment my friends you do not understand the concept of money my friends and because you do not understand it you will never be able to un- be, be able to figure out how money can make more money right and of course i am not a subject matter expert on the personal finance or finance in general but i as a professional understand the broader startup investment scenario but uh, before even we have we, we need to we, before even we figure out what the investor is looking for we need to understand the basic fundamentals right so now three reasons why you need to make investment both at a personal level or even at a business level one combating inflation what do we mean by inflation inflation is mahangai the value of money over time decreases or basically things get expensive over time right something that you were you, you were buying for 20 rupees in 2010 after 10 years you would, you would now be buying it at like 30 40 50 rupees based on the based on the product the commodity the the point i'm trying to make is 
you need to combat inflation because the value of money will decrease over time so you need to get some sort of a return some sort of a percentage or some sort of increase in value in terms of money so that your money matches the market value right so therefore in order to combat inflation in order to create a fund for emergency or security over time and of course most importantly money will lose its value if it's there in the in like a hard cash format in your pocket so therefore you need to invest your money and you need to park your money into some assets so that it creates few future wealth it creates future security for you and it's primarily like a personal finance topic but it's a topic for another day and we will talk about that in length later on but now once you've understood the broad fundamental around money we also the fundamental two i want to talk about you need to understand the risk involved in investment and this is where the game becomes interesting because startup itself is a risky game so money investment is risky startup is risky and imagine the risk involved in of uh, the risk involved of putting your money into something which is in general such a high risk thing right so therefore fundamental two is basically understand the understanding the risk involved in investment so basically what is a risk risk is the probability or uncertainty uncertainty of losing the money rather than getting profits right so therefore let us say if you are somebody who uh, and 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 for all those who do not understand this fundamental or do not know about equity share markets and stuff like that don't worry guys i will simplify all of these things for you uh, from the startup point of view so do not do not worry do not bother don't don't uh, don't uh, worry if you do not understand what i'm saying right the, oh, oh, just 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 be with me try and uh, you know understand the broader concepts before i jump onto startup investment and if you find this complicated you will for sure find startup investment to be super complicated and therefore you will not be able to raise money from the investors right and that is the reason why we are talking about on this topic today right so now coming on to the core part right so we are talking about the startup in uh, risk involved in a, in a, in an investment so there are primarily three types of risk it's a very high risk moderate risk or, or a lower risk and of course i'm not talking about the technical jargons or technical pieces related to uh, money investing something like a market risk or a liquidity risk and stuff like that i'm not an expert on that and i'm not going to tell you something or talk about something that i don't understand the only point i'm trying to make here is that there certain sort of risk involvement even in in investment so if you think that you will invest certain money into certain asset and it will give you sure shot return that is sure shot money that is not going to happen it's not the possibility so basically what happens there will be certain sort of a risk involved that means that either either it will be it will be a very high risk proposition or it will be a moderate risk proposition or it will be a low risk proposition right now a lot of you would come and ask me maybe later on that why even take risk right so we need to understand that we take risk almost every at every point in time at every uh, every day in our life at every point in time we are already taking risk right when you're driving the car on the road you're already taking a risk because there's a possibility of having an accident when you're sitting in an aeroplane you're already taking a risk because the aer aeroplane might crash the flight might crash so every and anything in life has certain sort of a risk attached to it right but we as human beings mitigate the risk so for example in order to not getting into an accident on the road we have put in the brakes we have put in the speed limit we have put in the road we have put in the red lights we have put in the police we have put in the checkpoints and also we have put in the seat belt so we have put in all the factors that mitigate the risk so therefore risk no matter what will be a part of any and everything you do therefore it will be a fundamental part of even your startup investment or in general investment so risk will be a part so fundamental one no, point number 1 you need to understand investment which i've already spoken about fundamental number 2 you need to understand what's risk once you have understood the, the the investment and risk third is something that you need to understand what is a startup and then we will combine all these three pieces of information together so that we reach a common ground that defines 
startup investment. So what is a startup, right? And I've already spoken about this at length in the AMA one, which is startup basics and how to start get started. And I'm, I've also spoken a bit about this into other small episodes that are already there on my YouTube channel, right? So what is a startup? It's basically a, a private company somewhere around five to 10 years old, which is designed to scale very, very rapidly, very, very quickly. And basically in general, a startup start as a, starts as a very small organization and then eventually raises money from venture capital, angel investors and build down in the business primary any startup just to kind of re give you a recap has three key factors it has an innovative idea or an innovative concept it is typically a technical technology company technical bag and it is highly scalable right so now when you know that these three factors these, these three things are a part of a startup so we know the investment we know the risk we know what is a startup combining all of these three things together right so tell me in comments is startup a risky affair all those who are watching, can you quickly tell me in the comments, is startup a risk, is, is startup a risky affair? Can you quickly let me know, is startup a risky affair? What do you think about a startup? Is startup a risky affair or is startup not a risky affair? And all those who have just joined the session, drop a like, drop a, a maybe, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't done, haven't done so. And get more friends guys because this is super fun session we're going to talk about all about the startup investment and investors mindset today if you have understood uh everything up till now drop a boom if you have not understood anything drop a question and also most importantly uh answer my question that i'm asking you do you think startup is a risky affair so deepak says yes it is absolutely anybody else who would like to comment on to that do you think startup is a risky affair? Yes. Startup, uh, yep, absolutely, Rahul. Startup is a super risky affair. Let me present a few facts for all those who think that startup is cool, startup is full of glory, and everything is hunky dory. No, my friends, 90% of startups fail in first three years, 99% of them fail in first five years, and only 0.05% of startups are able to ra raise venture capital, right? That means, what do what do we mean by that? That means that most of the startups, 99% of the startups fail and even uh, a, 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 a higher, higher, like a, a, like a very big percentage of them are not able to raise money. And to understand now this risk reward, uh, this investment, this entire theory, this entire thesis, this entire process, we need to understand a concept called, called as valley of death valley curve, right? Now, I know a few of you have heard this before, but again, for somebody who's, uh, who's, who's here for the first time, who's maybe uh, looking at this concept for the first time, let me try and explain this to you. And and then once we have understood this, then we'll move on to the investment part, right? So if you've understood everything till now, as I said, keep on dropping the boom, right? So what is a death valley curve? Basically, a death valley curve is anything. Uh, it's, it's basically a time period from when you think of building a startup or when you launch your product up till becoming uh, uh, cash flow positive or something like you, you achieve a break even, right? So basically, if I go by the definition, the term the term death valley curve it describes as the period in the life of a startup in which it begun it has begun the operations but it hasn't generated the revenue yet so i know a lot of you a few of you would be asking hey uh, uh, when is how how is this happening? It is happening because uh, you started the operation. That means uh, you started making the product. Apne kuch product banana shuru kar diya. You started making a certain product. You started building a certain software or a platform or a product or started the services. But you haven't started making money or you haven't started making enough money. Now because there's a gap in in terms of you're spending more money than you have in your uh, than, than than you're making. You're basically going into something called the cash burn phase, right? this is where you spend more money so cash burn means you're burning your money you're not making money you're not cash flow positive and this is the reason why you need to raise money right this is the reason why companies need money because if they will keep on burning cash that is they will keep on spending more money they're making they will eventually lose all the money and they will die right 
बहुत सिंपल सा लॉजिक है ना इफ यू हैव लेट अस से कंटेनर इन व्हिच यू आर यू आर यू आर फिलिंग वाटर फ्रॉम वन साइड इफ इफ यू लूजिंग वाटर फ्रॉम अनदर साइड द ओनली रीजन द कंटेनर विल कंटेन एनफ वाटर इज व्हेन यू हैव मोर वाटर इनकमिंग एंड लेस वाटर गोइंग आउट इफ द इफ मोर वाटर इज गोइंग टू फ्लो आउट ऑफ द कंटेनर देन वाटर इनकमिंग इवेंचुअली आफ्टर लेट अस से कपल ऑफ आवर्स ऑफ और कपल ऑफ डेज बेस्ड ऑन द फ्रीक्वेंसी बेस्ड ऑन द स्पीड द कंटेनर विल इवेंचुअली बी एम्प्टी right you will lose all the water because the water incoming is less than the water out is is less than the water outgoing so this is the death valley curve right the the, the your burning more money than your making right and you can simply google this term and you'll find a couple of fancy diagram and i'll i'll put again this file into the resource below so this is the reason why you as an entrepreneur and see again paise ka baat aa gaya the money thing has again come into the picture right and this is the reason why you as an entrepreneur needs to understand the terms like break even customer acquisition cost customer life lifetime value something like arpu average revenue per user and all of these primary terms are used around in a technology technology backed business that most of the startups are right so let me give an example of a saas business right and that's the classical example right so if you remember like couple of decades ago and not say years ago couple of decades ago the software used to be very very expensive the price of a software used to be like a uh, couple of thousands of rupees or even when a company was trying to build a software the overall price of the software used to be in couple of lakhs if you're going for a custom software right uh, a, a, a lot of you are engineers or maybe designers and you can correlate even if 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 you if you rewind your life like 5 7 10 years ago uh, the the price of buying a coral draw or photoshop or illustrator was in couples of couple of thousands of rupees or maybe couple of lakhs if you have to buy the enterprise license but with the saas functionality what has happened you can access a very high quality enterprise grade software at like just a, at like a peanut uh, you know at a price of a peanut right so basically you uh, uh, the the cost is divided over time and the cost is divided and or shared amongst multiple people and that has enabled saas companies to be in the market but to build a saas company the trick is that you need to have a lot of money right in the beginning because in order to build a world class software that you can later on sell as on a subscription model you need to hire a great engineering team a great tech team and you need to spend a lot of money in sustaining that tech team even before you start earning a single penny from the customer so therefore saas is a great example and and this example holds true for uh, every uh you know every possible uh, uh company right so therefore you need to you need to understand the death valley curve scenario for your business you also need to understand the concepts like a break even customer acquisition cost lifetime value r point things like that right so once you have understood all these things once you have understood uh you know that startup is a risky proposition right so you also then need to understand that now if we think from the investor's mindset the startup investment is not done for fun startup investment is basically done in order to generate future wealth or future return by an investor right uh, primarily predominantly in majority of the cases startup investment is a very 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 high risk scenario especially for angel investors the earlier you come into the picture the high risk you had but of course as rahul said it's high risk high return the higher risk you're, you're capable of taking the higher reward you're going to get and of course investors would want their money uh, of course if you are getting into a debt funding you you would have to make sure you have to return their money but even if you're getting into equity deal investors would expect the the money to come back and all, and of course i don't want to get into the startup uh, investment terms and angel training stuff that is something we will we'll talk about some some day later but uh just to conclude these this entire scenario together by now if you have been with me you would have understood number one what is in general in general investment what is the risk related to an investment what is a startup then we reached out and spoke about the risk factor involved in a startup and why is a startup such a risky proposition and therefore why do you need money right now once you have understood this thing and once you once we once we have achieved this level now let us understand and let us talk in depth about understanding startup investments once we have understood the startup investment then we'll move on to speaking about the investor's mindset so let's now talk about understanding startup investment right 
so why does a startup needs money can can all of you guys who are watching can you drop your thoughts into the chat section can you let me know why do you think startup needs money drop quick comment into the chat and let me quickly read your comments as well tell me tell me tell me folks why do you think the startup needs investment there are certain reasons i have i have given you a few reasons in the previous uh, in in the in the in the in the in couple of uh, minutes of conversation uh, but you tell me you know why do you think startup needs investment meanwhile i am quickly scrolling to a chat for continuous delivery yes good point to scale maintenance of service yep absolutely let the let the comments keep on sharing your comments guys okay all right okay see so the biggest reason most of you missed and see this is the reason i have been speaking about uh, money at such uh, uh, you know with 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 uh, you know i've been speaking about money at such a length and a breadth and in depth because see when you're building a startup the biggest challenge with all you guys and primarily who are the first time early stage entrepreneurs the biggest challenge you guys will face that one you have no background uh, you don't have money you don't have a solid backing right you would have almost zero assets you have no rock solid balance sheet and in most of the cases you will neither have an office or you will have no proof in order to kind of go to a secured financial institution like a bank or a traditional financial institution so that they can lend you the money right you as a startup entrepreneur if you are a, if you are a traditional business see the difference between any traditional business and any startup is that primarily startups are technology enabled startups are lean startups are asset light so therefore you have nothing to mortgage you have nothing to kind of give as a in, in, in uh, kind of give as a collateral to the bank right so therefore you have no assets most of you guys are very very young so you have no Uh, like high profile balance sheet to prove that you will be returning the money and most cases you will have no office no proof of concept and nothing now the problem that happens when this is that you cannot go to a traditional financial financial institution like a bank or any other uh, nbfc or any other organization that lends you the money and why do you need money you primarily need money for three things and correct me if i'm wrong here uh, uh, let me know if you think i missed on any point primary th primary three reasons why you will need money is number one to build the product the most the major amount of money will be going into product development so you as a startup need money to build the product second to in order to build that product you need to hire people so then you will be needing money to hire people and last but not the least then you will be needing the money need, needing the money to market that product and make sales so you need to build the product you need to hire the people who can build the product and also hire the people who can market and sell the product so these are the three major thrust areas for which you will be needing money and of course what other people said growth scale all these things of course they will eventually come as a part of the entire process but primarily initially these are the three reasons why you need the money right i'm repeating to build the product to hire people and to market the product and because a conventional financial institution will not give you the money that is the reason that is where you need to understand the startup investment this is where the startup investors will come so what so who is a startup investor right so startup investors primarily they are going to come and because you don't have any physical collateral or any stuff anything like that they will essentially be primarily be an understand this will be buying a piece of the company these guys will come and buy a piece of a company which typically you understand as equity investment they will give you some sort of a capital 
which is the money. So that that so that money is called as capital. They will give you some sort of capital, some sort of money, and in 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 exchange of that capital, they'll buy some sort of some percentage of a of a, of a company that is called as equity. So startup investors are essentially buying a piece of the company for the investment. They're basically putting down the basic first capital in exchange for equity, a portion, and they basically are going to take portion or ownership in the startup and maybe write for the future profits as well right so by doing this basically you are creating a collaboration you are you're basically creating a partnership between your business or yourself and the investor who's going to come on board is going to give you the money right and and the deal is that in in, in most of the cases in primary cases the deal is that uh, uh if you lose the money and because it's not a dead deal this is the reason understand this guys very very clearly because this is not a dead deal d e b t debt i'm talking not the dead d not d e a d debt loan this is because this is not the dead deal even if you lose money even if the company shuts down you do not owe any money to the investor if you are raising money from for, uh, uh, in the form of equity but if you go and raise a debt round if you go and raise debt money therefore in that case you will for sure have to return the principal amount and maybe not the not not the profits not the percentage but if you raise debt basically you lo you lose less ownership so it's a trade off uh, it's a trade off between uh, capital and ownership and therefore you have to figure out whether you're going to raise a complete equity round or you're going to raise a partial equity come debt or convertible round again it's a different in depth subject in that topic i can't i'm not, i'm, I'm I, can't, I can't cover that in a one hour session but i will i will definitely be doing a detailed session on debt and equity investment we will for sure be doing that now this is where you need to now understand the form of investment right now you need to understand uh, the difference between angel investor and venture capitalist right so the point i'm trying to make now is a lot time lot of times and i've spoken about this pri pri pre uh, previously on a few of my ams and uh, uh, i have also put up a post on instagram around this that a lot of you guys uh, can raise money if you're a student incubator can give you the money uh, friends and family can give you the money uh, government has policies where you get the money uh, competitions you can raise money via competition but if you have to now go for a institutional investment if you have to go now for uh, primarily a formal sort of raising money the only two ways angel investors or venture capitalists right can any of you tell me uh, what is the difference between an angel investor or a venture capitalist how many how many of you know what is an angel investor how many of you, you know what is a venture capitalist just a second there's some trouble with the cam give me a few seconds meanwhile you can post your comments yeah okay so can you quickly tell me what is the difference between an angel investor and a venture capitalist right or or do you do you know even do you even know these terms have you heard about these terms uh have have any of you pitched to any venture capital firm uh have any of you basically pitched to any angel investor before do you know anything about it can you quickly uh tell me your thoughts in the comment section All right. Uh, I think you may know or you may not know or maybe. Yep. Good point, Shashank. Yes. Angel investors are primarily individuals. Yes, absolutely. And venture capitalists are. And venture capitalists are primarily. They are primarily institutional investors. So now. And I, I and I, and and give me a quick feedback, guys. I hope you I'm I'm able to make you understand all these fundamentals. I'm, I'm able to explain these fundamentals very clear to clear to you. And I hope you are understanding all these pointers in the broad manner, right? Of course, as I said, these are these are detailed out sessions. But the idea behind this aim is to, as I said, quickly uh, talk to you guys, quickly resolve a few of your queries, and most importantly, quickly. 
uh, you know, give you a glimpse of a new topic every time so that you are more aware and more smarter and more intelligent and more knowledgeable than the last time, right? That's that's the primary idea or the primary objective. Okay, so yes, so as as a few of you already mentioned about angel investors and uh, 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 kind of venture capitalists, let me now quickly tell you the definition. So angel investors are primarily, and the most important point you made are high net worth individuals. Yes, of course, they're individuals, but primarily they're HNIs, HNIs, high net worth individuals. These are rich, wealthy folks, right? So they are primarily the people who invest money into the companies uh, and and they may or may not be uh, business owners. So I have a I have a list of who they can be. So basically, see, they 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 can be uh, HNIs. They can be uh, existing entrepreneurs. They can be in. A, uh, so for example, even when Sachin uh, Sachin Sachin Bansal and Bini Bansal were running Flipkart, they were already already investing into multiple other companies in capacity of an angel investor. The point I'm trying to make here is that they can they can be entrepreneurs themselves who now have enough money who are HNIs so that they can invest small chunks of money into smaller companies and they can also be the high profile high end professionals working in a c suit or working in a top management of a multinational or maybe a startup right so these guys can also be the angel investors so primarily the definition is that they, they are high net worth individuals and these are the people who come and put in some sort of a small chunk of money, some sort of a capital in a in a company in form of an equity, right? So why somebody wants to become an angel investor? Somebody would want to become an angel investor because the earlier they invest, the higher risk they take. The higher risk they take, the higher equity they can negotiate. And if they can negotiate a higher equity, they have more power. So therefore, high risk, high reward. The earlier you go and invest in a company, of course, because you're taking a higher high risk. But the, the idea is that higher risk you take, the more equity you can ask for. So imagine, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you would be now hearing news about Reliance. That Reliance is, is, is raising, raising bizarre amount of money. Look at. Uh, the amount of deals which are happening. Reliance already is worth a couple of lakhs of crores. That means that Reliance, when they raise money in terms of thousand of crores, they're only spending 1% or 2% or 3%. They're only shelling that sort of equity, right? But if you are going to kind of, as, an, uh, as a very early stage company, going to go to an investor, you're going to shell out 10, 20, 30, 40% equity for a small amount of money. Big, and, and the sole reason is that Reliance is a very stable company. It is valued at 10,000, 100,000, 1 lakh crore. And therefore, uh, any, any investor would want to come and kind of uh, take the piece of that pie, which is of very, very low risk. But in your case, as an as a, as a early stage startup, the challenge is that you're very high risk. And therefore, every penny he spent, there's a higher chance of him, the investor losing the money. Therefore, more equity and more power uh, is they, that they will look for. And of course, there's, there's, uh, there's another thing called angel groups. And you can definitely, for sure, reach out to an angel group. It basically a group of angel investors managed by a, a managed by a management team but that's a different topic and then of course we have venture capitalists so who are venture capitalists basically venture capitalists are more institutional uh, money management organizations they are they're, they're basically a body they're more formal more institutionalized they're a money management organization then they and they raise money from various sources so understand the difference when an, when an angel investor comes and gives you the money he's giving you his own money but when a VC is giving you the money, VC does not own the money. It is not his money. So venture capital for venture capital firm are primarily money management organizations that raise money from sources like uh, you know uh, uh, high high net, high net worth individuals, family offices, uh, you know institutional investors, and things like that. They are corporates they are companies venture capitalist firms are companies they do not own the money but angel investors own the money so the vcs basically uh, you know bring along the cash resources advice connections and this is the reason why if you become a vc funded company you have you become you have a higher chance of success right and that's that's the pipeline so initially only friends fools and family gives you the money then you have angels then your VCs, and then ultimately you do an IPO, and that is how the pipeline looks like, right? And also, once you're reaching out to venture capitalists, you also need to see what kind of startups they support, what is their investment theory, what stages are they looking for, uh, industries, geographical reasons, and stuff like that, right? Now, coming to 
the exciting part right so how many of you have seen shark tank already and if you've understood everything till now give me a thumbs up and my next question to all of you is that how many of you have watched shark tank before the reason why i'm asking this this question is that most of the entrepreneurs think that uh investment process is that you walk into a room give a pitch to an investor and walk out walk out walk out with a bag of cash right most of the investor most of the uh, young entrepreneurs think that uh, the deals happen on a shark tank the entrepreneur gets the money if the investor commits him the money they have the fancy that uh, you know when you walk into the room you pitch and if, if they say hey here's your 1 million dollar you will walk out with a bag of cash but that's not the point uh, the the right process of investment is you build a product you pitch to an investor then if you get the deal if the investor says i am going to kind of give you the money or what you're doing looks excited let me put in the money you go for something called the due diligence right that is they go and check whether whatever you said is right or not they check your legal papers they check your financial papers they check any and everything around the company so that they're sure what you said is correct then they give you something called as a term sheet a term sheet is basically the primary deal between you and them you is a startup entrepreneur them is the investor then they go and kind of do a term sheet you sign the term sheet once the term sheet is approved and the due diligence is positive then you sign the shareholder agreement and then you get the money so investors have a right to reject you giving the money if the term sheet is not up to uh up to the common grounds between both both of you guys and also if the due diligence fails so if an investor has committed the money it is not guaranteed that you will get the money in your bank account the reason why i'm trying to make you understand this is that do not uh get into the wrong notion that you go to the investor you pitch him and you walk out with a bag full of cash that's not happening but now why investors would want to give you the money the investors would want to give you the money because they as i said because they invest in you at a high risk high reward therefore eventually they want to make money and they only make money by getting an exit which is only three ways an investor an early stage angel investor going is going to make money one he's going to make money in the next round that is a, if a if a bigger investor comes into the company and gives you more money the smaller investor will exit that is he'll he'll his he'll exchange his equity in form of capital he will take back his money he will give you return the equity and therefore he will make money that is the next round right or he can make money when you go for an ipo that is initial public offering or if a bigger company comes and acquires you and to understand all of this another point i want to make you need to understand something called the cap table right if you do not understand the cap table it will be tough for you to raise money now concluding this part and to give you a broad perspective why any any angel will angel will give you the money the classical example or the biggest example that i can quote in front of front of all of you is the example of peter thiel investing 500000 dollars in facebook he was one of the early initial early investor in the company and he made 1 billion dollar in cash out of that deal right so peter thiel is the best example right now once you have understood all of these things right once you have understood what is angel investment once you have understood what is what is venture capital once you have understood what is investment what is startup investment now it is the time to figure out who is the investor who is the great investor for you and what is he looking from you right if you have got everything up till now drop a boom into the comment and like the video if you haven't done it so far and i am sure that this is adding some value to you guys i'm sure tell me in the comment section i know only a few people are watching but don't bother don't worry a lot of people watch it later drop the quick comment and let me know if you have learned something new today if you have understood something new today if i have been able to kind of give you or added some more value to you drop a quick comment fantastic all right so now now we are on the tip of the 
uh, mountain let's start rolling down now let me start decoding everything for you now let me start and help and connect the dots for all of you guys right so first of all you need to understand if you are a early stage startup founder if you are somebody who's building a startup you you have already understood it's a high risk high reward thing and because it's an investment of course the investor is going to take a high risk on you therefore he's going to take a more take more equity but who's a great angel so the point i'm trying to make is who is a great angel a great angel is not somebody who only gives you the money a great angel is not somebody who only gives you the money a great angel number 1 will bring along a great business business networking network on the table that will support you as a startup if you are raising money at a very early early stage from so from somebody who does not understand your business you are for sure bound to die because as i said this particular person will have more power and because he has more power he will be able to interfere with the business decisions as well and this power Uh, kind of reduces with time the more mature of a company you become the more stable of a company you become the risk gets mitigated with time right so the earlier somebody invests the more equity they own therefore the more power so a great investor is somebody who understands your business in in depth he is somebody who gives you a business network and relevant connections second somebody who can mentor you as well a great mentor is important so if you have to choose between 100% money and let us say 70% money plus a 30% mentor go for 70% money and 30% mentor a great mentor will give you a lot of free advice in a great business network that money can't even buy and third and last but not the least he can give you the money right so do not keep money as the primary motive keep business development business network connection and mentoring as the primary target when you're reaching out to an investor who, and th- that is a great angel investor right so now if you have to now understand what this person is looking for if you have to find somebody if you have to convince somebody to invest money in your company and this is where they said we will now start rolling down the down the hill uh, what the investor is looking for let me now quickly tell you a few things from the investor mindset point of view that what is he looking for from you if you because if you're not able to tell him all these things he may not give you the money right so number one thing any and every investor is looking for a proof of concept i have already spoken about this particular thing that ideas do not get funded the very basic fundamental reason why ideas and and understand when i say this line when that ideas do not get funded by institutional investors primarily angel investors and venture capital firms is for a very simple reason because these are not businesses angel investors and vc companies angel investors and venture capital firms only invest money in a business because they will invest x amount and would want return in terms of 10x therefore the only person who's going to invest in an idea or give you the money at idea stage is going to be friends family fools crowdfunding savings and other stuff like, like that or maybe some government scheme some government policy or maybe some competition right and as i said there's a separate post about this on my instagram channel but any institutional investor any venture capital venture capitalist and primarily the angel investor i'm talking about angel investor guys here primarily the angel investor is going to look at the traction the proof of concept they will not give you money at idea stage and even somehow if you convince them to give you money at idea stage you are doomed my friend the reason is you're going to then give away so much of equity and so much of power at such an early stage that you will eventually end up becoming an employee or losing your company completely to investors right uh, remember the classical example why steve jobs was fired from his, his own company because he lost enough power right so that uh, board eventually threw him out of his own company i'm not uh kind of trying to make you scared i'm not saying that do not raise money but raise it as a as a strategy raise it in a way you also retain certain pow- power so traction proof of concept is something that investor is looking for for the more traction you have the better proof of concept you have the better negotiating power you get right second thing that any and every investor is looking for 
it is looking for your thorough command on numbers and datas, whether it is market research data, whether it is financial projections, whether it is the things I spoke about, like how much money you're trying to raise, uh, unit economics, break even point, customer acquisition cost, lifetime value, stuff like that. You need to need to need to be very, very clear in terms of numbers and data. If you do not remember numbers, if you do not know numbers, if you do not know data, investors will not talk to you. So you need to have, they're looking for a rock solid understanding around of, of your, of uh, sorry, rock solid command of yours on numbers and data. Be sure, be, be ready with the data. Then of course, all the investors are also looking for your understanding of the market along with the business understanding, along with the business plan, and also some sort of expertise around the domain. They need this thing. And if I have to club, club, this, club this with another point, they're also looking for a great team or a comprehensive team. Investors, if they have to choose between choosing two teams with the same idea, they will always go and bet on a team, which is capable and which is which can which can basically uh, pull that particular business off in a better way i have already done one hour session of aim with dnk on how to create a core team and how to find a great co-founder if you haven't watched that yet i would request all of you to go and watch that because until and unless you are not able to convince the investor that i have the best team right i have the best team that can pull this business off and we are the guys to be backed because understand business will change time will change product will change at a lot of times you might have to pivot there might be failures but if it's a great team you as a great team will know how to face challenges how to face failures how to pivot how to retreat and eventually make the company successful the business model the company and other things like that might will change over time right so a great plan a great domain understanding a great understanding of the product and a great 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 team is what investor is looking for right now they're also looking to understand your connectivity with the problem this is point number four you, they are looking for a great story they're looking for a great empathy they're looking for great connectivity with a problem if you as an entrepreneur do not have in-depth understanding of the problem in-depth and in-depth understanding of the market in-depth understanding of the customer there's a less chance of you getting funded because that shows that your research is superficial or you do not understand what the customer is looking for and if you do not understand what the customer is looking for really really in depth uh, the investor might not want to play the bet on you so therefore you need to have a great story that convinces the investor and 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 also empathizes them and also gives this feeling to them that you as an entrepreneur uh, if i may say this know you, that you know your shit right you need to have great connectivity on the ground right Sixth point, another point, you need to have a lot of clarity in terms of defining your goals and milestones. A lot of times I've seen in my, in my, in my experience, in my career, in uh, entrepreneurs, uh, just build a company, but do not know where they're going, where they're going. They're just building the company and they're just, you know, dealing with operations, building the product, stuff like that, but they do not know where they're trying to go. You need to understand you need to have clear cut roadmap. You need to have a clear cut goal plan. You need to have clear cut milestones. Investors love people who have done their homework, right? Whether, as I said, I'm repeating myself, whether you whether you talk about the business model, we'll talk about the market research, you talk about the customer profile, whether you talk about the milestones and uh, uh, goals and all sort of planning, investors love people who are planned. That means that shows that the entrepreneur is serious. He has done his homework, right? So, Make sure you have a clear cut planning done in terms of your goals and roadmap and milestones, right? Then if you have also worked a few things around investment structure, right? Investors would love that. So make sure you have an investor in, 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 in structure ready. Another big point that investors are looking for, they're looking to invest in a hot sector. I was speaking with a couple of students uh, this morning uh, and I was just telling them that today, if you go and start a flip cart, 
you might not get funded today if you go and start uh, maybe uber you might not get funded today if you go and start book my show you might not get funded because all of these have now become saturated sectors my friend so you need to basically look for a hot upcoming sector if you're not in a hot and upcoming sector investors will not give you money investors are always eyeing for hot sectors which have a potential to explode and expand so they are looking for hot sectors right other than the hot sector they're also looking for early movers ev is hot right now right and if you look at the ev investment people have started speaking about ev right now uh, elon musk says i'm getting tesla to india but investors have already invested in companies like arthur energy 5 7 8 years back already so you have to they they basically want to back a early mover you as an entrepreneur should be sharp enough to predict what's going to be a hot market you need to be an early mover and if you're an early mover investors would want they love people like that right also you need to have some sort of a competitive advantage right if you have some sort of ip if you're prepared if you're some sort of a competitive advantage even so some sort of differentiator that is what the investors would need from you and last but not the least they would want you to be very well prepared on your cash flow and your financial plans that is the last thing see the entire activity the entire thing is being done in order to raise money so if you are not able to raise if you're not able to uh, tell them uh, the number if you have, if, sorry if sorry if you haven't done, done the number crunching if you're not thorough and clear with the numbers they might not give you the money so they need you to be very very thorough with the numbers so basically if, if you have to conclude what investors want what investors are looking for what is a mindset of an angel investor an angel investor is looking he understand he is already a high risk investor he knows what he is getting into 90% of portfolio companies of angel investors die my friends that is a fact still they go out and invest into startups right because they know that it will one of them will become a unicorn or will them a great exit and that is how the remaining 90 are subsidized right so therefore three major things investors are looking for they're looking for a hot market they're looking for a great team and they're primarily looking for entrepreneurs who are prepared who know their shit right so now as i pro- as i promised you as i as i told you initially i am going to tell you the perfect startup equation right So what is a perfect startup equation what is the equation that makes you look like a fundable business and if all of these check boxes have been ticked mark on your startup profile congratulations you are investable you may or may not get the money that's a separate debate altogether because that's absolutely subjective but you are investable you look investable you you primarily from a broad point of view you are a company which can go out in the market and raise some money right so what is a perfect startup equation the perfect startup equation is a combination of three critical points and then i'll explain them in detail the point number 1 is real problem are you as an entrepreneur trying to solve a problem which is real you haven't that means you haven't thought of any random problem in your own mind you have figured out a real problem on the market and how do you find a real problem you find that by validating your business or business idea and that is achieved and done through customer validation so point number 1 the real problem second problem second thing how big is the problem despite the fact the problem is real how big is the problem you're trying to solve big enough that means is it scalable enough is it a huge business opportunity and the scalability can be find out by doing the market research and market analysis so if you have a real problem if you're trying to solve a real problem if you are trying to solve a big 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 problem that means you're a, you're in a huge market that means uh, you have check mark two boxes of being a investable startup now the third thing and this is where the entire game makes or breaks is the possibility of 10x return is your startup showing a possibility as i said earlier also nobody wants and nobody can guarantee they will give return the company might fail as i said out of 190 90% companies will fail but do you are, are you able to assure is there a hope is there a possibility of a 10x return right and what gives 
the possibility of a 10x return. There are three primary factors that give the possibility of a 10x return. Number one, a great team. Are you a great, great, great team? If you are not a great team, that means uh, do you have the right skill set? Do you have the right background? Do you have the right knowledge? Have you done enough groundwork? How deeply do you understand the customer? How deeply do you understand the market? Are you a great comprehensive team? Are you a less risky team? All these factors make a great team, right? And if you want, sorry, if you want to learn this thing in depth, go and check out the episode on uh, uh, where I've spoken about how to find a co-founder and a build a first level core team for the startup. Go and watch that episode. Are you a great team? Second, what is your unfair advantage? Is there any sort of unfair advantage you have on your business that makes you uh, that 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 shows investor a possibility of a 10x return? And last but not the least, the hot sector. Do you are you working in some sort of a hot sector, right? If you are in a hot sector, that means there's a possibility of tax return. So summarizing everything, real problem, big problem, possibility of tax return, return problem, a real problem figured out by customer validation, big problem figured out by market research, and possibility of 10, 10x return figured out by a great team and fair advantage in hot sector. And this is my friends is the perfect startup equation. If you are able to kind of put everything into this equation and also go by all the pointers that I spoke about in terms of understanding from the investor's point of view, if you eventually figured out what the investor is looking for, and if you combine both of these things together from the startup point of view, investor point of view, you will, I cannot say that you will for sure get, get money, but you will have substantially higher chances of raising money for your business. You will become a substantially fundable startup, right? So on that note, I am closing my session. That is all from my side. If you have any questions, I'll give you a quick 10 seconds to kind of drop your questions into the chat if you have any. If not, if you like the session, drop a boom in the session. Uh, or if you've got everything, drop a got it. Give me a thumbs up in the section uh, in the in the chat below, and then we will wrap. Yep. So although I haven't got any questions up till yet, I will give you a minute more to let me know if you have any questions, and then we will wrap. And if you like the session, drop a thumbs up. And also, my request to all those who are watching, do not forget to share uh, this particular episode with your friends. I hope it was useful. I hope it was it, it gave you some sort of value. And as I said, do not forget to like and share uh, the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be really, really grateful to all of you guys. All right. So I am not getting any more questions. So this brings us to the end. Let me conclude. This brings us to the end. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of AMA with DNK. This was episode number 13, Understanding the Startup Investor Mindset. I hope you liked the content. I hope I was able to give you certain perspective around what investors are looking for, what is investment, what is investors are looking for, what is a startup investor, and more things around that. Uh, once again, like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And do let me in the comment section below if you have any other specific uh, uh, topic in mind that you want me to cover. I can go and cover and talk on that uh, particular topic. And if you have more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. I have a question from Shashank. I'll quickly pick Shashank. Give me a second. I'll pick that question from your side. Uh, and uh, uh, yep, keep on. Uh, letting me know if you have any more uh, questions or if you uh, kind of maybe in the comment you can let me know if you want me to cover any other topics and if you have any more questions specifically post the session reach out to me on instagram i'll be more than happy to pick them up from there there's a question from shashank uh sir can we have the session on financial basis like cash flow diagram yes of course shashank that is in the pipeline right now i have a older session on that i will give you uh, if you give me a second, I can give you a link of that sec uh, session uh, in the chat. And it's a, it's a pretty old, it's a year old session, but I'm working on improving the content. But for starters, you can go and uh, check that video. It's on the Code and Labs YouTube channel. If you'll allow me, give me a second. I will give you uh, access to that video as well. Give me a second, please. I will paste that in the chat.
and I'll I'll really appreciate guys if you can go and spread the word about these sessions, uh, because yep, I hope they're useful. Shashank, here you go. I have pasted the comment, uh, uh, pasted the link of that video in the in the comment section in the chat. Uh, you can access it. But as I said, it's a pretty old session. It's almost like one and a half, one and a half years, uh, year, uh, year old session. But it will at least give you a basic understanding. And I will get in touch. Uh, uh, in I'll get in touch with you uh, once I plan to kind of redo this session once again. Uh, yeah, I'll be in touch with you, and we'll we'll try and do it for a larger audience then. All right. All right. That's it, folks. Uh, uh, so that's let's wrap and. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me on the uh, 13th episode. I really appreciate you coming here and giving me your time. And I hope to see you in the next session next Saturday, 9, 9.15 on AMV DNK with another topic. And yep. All right. Thank you so much. See you next Saturday. Good night. Have a great weekend and take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Good night.